Lesson 1.2 is intercept symmetry and graphing. An x-intercept is where the graph intersects the x-axis or where your y-coordinate is equal to zero. A y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis or where your x-coordinate is equal to zero. Those pieces of information where your x and y coordinates are equal to zero is how we're going to find x and y intercepts. So if we have the graph y equals x squared minus four and we wanna find the x and y intercepts, we're going to set each of the x coordinates equal to zero and find the other coordinate. In order to find my x intercept, I let my y coordinate be equal to zero and then I just solve for x. So I added four to both sides and took the square root. Whenever you take a square root, you have to have plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus two. So those are my two x intercepts. And then for my y-intercept, I let x be 0. 0 squared is just 0, minus 4, so y equals negative 4. So my y-intercept is negative 4. And then I just connected my dots for my graph. Symmetry of a graph is when all points have a reflection or a mirror image point across a particular line or point. The three types of symmetry that we will look at specifically are x-axis, so it's reflexive across the x-axis, y-axis, it's reflexive across the y-axis, and origin, it's reflexive across the origin, or it can rotate 180 degrees. A graph can have no symmetry at all. It could have one of these types of symmetries, or it could have more than one type of symmetry. So look at these eight graphs below, and go ahead and pause the video and decide what type of symmetries, if any, each of these graphs have. So for 33, it has all three. If I look at a point here in the first quadrant, it reflects across the x-axis, it also reflects across the y-axis, and it also reflects across the origin, and that's true for all of the points in the domain. For number three, there's no symmetry, there's no reflection across anything. For number 35, there is y-axis symmetry. Every point on the left side of the y-axis has a matching point on the right side of the y-axis. Same thing with 36. 37, there is x-axis symmetry. Every point above the x-axis has a matching point below the x-axis. 38 has all three. It reflects across the x-axis, it reflects across the y-axis and the origin. And then 39 and 40 both have origin symmetry. Every point in the second quadrant matches a point in the fourth quadrant. Every point in the first quadrant matches a point in the third quadrant. We also have to be able to find these symmetries algebraically, not just graphically. So we have three tests, one for each type of symmetry. So for x-axis symmetry, for every, this upside down a symbol in math means for every or for all, for every point x, y on the graph, there's a matching point x negative y that's also on the graph. So every x coordinate has both a positive y coordinate and a negative y coordinate. So the way that we test this algebraically is that in our equation, we're going to replace every y with an opposite of y and see if we can simplify it down to the original equation. For y-axis symmetry, for every, or for all, x, y on the original equation, there's also negative x, y. So every point has a, for every y coordinate, there's both a positive x and a negative x that exists for that. So the way that we test that is in the original equation, we're gonna replace every x with an opposite of x and see if we can simplify it down to the original equation. For origin symmetry, for every x, y in the original equation, then opposite x, opposite y also exists. So both the x and the y change signs. So up here we have a negative x, positive y, and down here we have a positive x, negative y. Both change signs. So for our test, we're going to replace both x and y with their opposites and see if they simplify down to the original equation. So let's look at this. We have an equation here, y equals 4x squared over x squared plus 1, and we're going to test it algebraically for symmetry as well as find all possible intercepts. Whenever you test for symmetry, because there can be none, there could be one, there could be more than one, you always have to test all three. So you want to make sure you label them nice and neatly, and we know which of the three tests are for which of the three types of symmetry. I always like to write myself a note here of what I'm doing. So it's always the opposite variables. So if you're testing for x-axis symmetry, you change y. If you're finding an x-intercept, you make y be zero. So there's kind of this match there. So for this first one, if I want to test x-axis symmetry, every time I see a y in the original equation, I'm going to replace it with opposite of y. I'm not going to manipulate the equation at all. I'm not going to try and solve for y if it's not already solved for y. I'm just going to replace y with opposite of y and then see if I can simplify it. So I replace the original y with an opposite of y, and then I want to manipulate it to see if I can get back to y equals 4x squared over x squared plus 1. So I multiplied both sides by a negative 1 to see if I can cancel off this negative 1. It's going to change the y to a positive y, but on the left, it's the same thing as multiplying by negative 1 over 1. Make sure the negative is only going to either the numerator or the denominator, not both. 
So I get negative 4x squared over x squared plus 1. There's no way I can manipulate this any further so that it goes back to the original equation. So therefore, this does not have x-axis symmetry. So now I'm going to do the same thing for y-axis symmetry. I'm going to replace every x in the original equation with an opposite of x. So on this one, I replaced every x with an opposite of x. Parentheses are your best friend. When you're replacing something in an equation, put parentheses around this one, around it. This one, it didn't really matter because there was nothing attached to y, but put parentheses around your negative x. So you get y equals 4 times negative x quantity squared over negative x quantity squared plus 1. Negative x quantity squared is the same thing as x squared for both of those, and so we end up with the original function or the original equation. So therefore, yes, this does have y-axis symmetry. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing for origin symmetry, except for I'm going to replace both of them. So I replaced my y with a negative y, I replaced both my x's with negative x's, and I got down to, once I squared negative x quantity squared, I got negative y equals 4x squared over x squared plus 1, which was the same issue as my x-axis symmetry, so therefore this is not going to have origin symmetry. There's no way I can make this go back to the original. So for this equation, it only has y-axis symmetry. So key piece here is whatever one you're testing for, you're replacing the opposite variable with a negative, Parentheses are your best friend. Simplify it, see if you can get back to the original. Now I'm going to do what we did previously, and I'm going to find all intercepts for this equation as well. For my x-intercept, I let y equal 0, so 0 equals 4x squared over x squared plus 1. For a fraction to equal 0, the numerator has to equal 0, but not the denominator. So I just set the numerator equal to 0, so you get 0 equals 4x squared, which means divide both sides by 4, 0 equals x squared, take the square root, x equals 0. So for the y-intercept, I let x be 0, y equals 4 times 0 squared over 0 squared plus 1, which gives you 0 over 1, so therefore y is equal to 0. A little hint, whenever your x-intercept is equal to 0, your y-intercept has to be equal to 0 because it's going through the origin. So that has been finding symmetry and intercepts. So now go ahead and pause the video and test 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36 for symmetry and find all its intercepts as well. So to test for x-axis symmetry, I let every y be negative y, and so I have 9x squared plus 4 times negative y quantity squared equals 36. Negative y squared is the same thing as y squared, so I end up with the original equation back. So yes, it has x-axis symmetry. For y-axis symmetry, I replaced every x with an opposite of x, so 9 times the quantity negative x quantity squared plus 4 y squared equals 36. Negative x quantity squared is just x squared, so it's simplified down to the original, so it also has y-axis symmetry. And then origin, I replaced both of them, just like before, both of them squared end up being the original equation, so therefore it also has origin symmetry. So this one has all three. For my x-intercepts, I let y be 0, 4 times 0 quantity squared is just 0, that goes away, so I get 9x squared equals 36, divide by 9, x squared equals 4, take the square root, x equals plus or minus 2. And then for my y-intercepts, I let x be 0, 9 times 0 squared is going to be 0, so I end up with 4y squared equals 36, divide both sides by 4, y squared equals 9, take the square root, y equals plus or minus 3. So testing for symmetry, let the opposite variable be negative, see if it simplifies down to the original. For origin, you do both. And then for intercepts, you let the opposite variable be equal to 0 and solve. For the last piece, doing a little bit of graphing, so we have three functions here, y equals x cubed, y equals the square root of x, and y equals 1 over x. Try making x, y tables, no using any graphing utilities of any sort, and see if you can sketch a graph of each of these and then note any symmetry and intercepts. So I made little x, y tables. I picked numbers that were helpful for each of these equations. So for y equals x cubed, I just used negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and I ended up with negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, so it looks like this. It has origin symmetry, and both the x and y intercepts are 0. For the square root of x, I picked perfect squares for my x's, 0, 1, 4, 9, so my outputs were nice numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, so it looks like this. I can't plug any negative numbers in for x because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So there are no symmetry, um, and the x and y intercepts, again, are 0. For 1 over x, um, I did negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then I also threw in negative 1 half and positive 1 half to see what was happening with smaller numbers. Um, if I plug in negative 2, I get negative 1 half. Same thing with positive 2, I get positive 1 half. For negative 1 and positive 1, I get negative 1 and positive 1. If I plug in negative 1 half, I end up with 1 over negative 1 half, which ends up being 2. And then same thing with 1 over 1 half. If I try and plug in 0, I'm dividing by 0, which I can't do, so there is no nothing there. I can't do anything. 
Um, so it looks like this. The bigger numbers that I plug in, the smaller my Y's are gonna get. The numbers between one and zero, the closer to zero I get, they're gonna get really, really big. So there is origin symmetry and there are no intercepts. So this has been symmetry, intercepts, and graphing.